All of the problems covered in my videos can be downloaded at accountingworkbook.com. If you go to the website, click the PDF link. You can download a copy of the workbook for yourself. Also on the website, you'll find links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones I've uploaded to YouTube. I've uploaded over a hundred extra videos on this website that you can't find on YouTube. So I do hope you'll check out accountingworkbook.com. All right, let's begin our problem. Let's have a look at problem 12-1A. You can see the title there. It says horizontal analysis. Now, what does that mean, horizontal? I always get my class to say, I, I say, okay, let's talk about horizontal analysis. What is the gesture you think of when you think of horizontal analysis? Just give, show me a gesture. So you sitting at your, your desk somewhere in, the, in this world uh, thinking about uh, horizontal what, what would you gesture for the word horizontal and i hope just in your mind you did a gesture like this like left to right right to left that is horizontal once in a while i have a student do this for horizontal and you know english must not be their first language and uh, uh that is of course vertical analysis but this is horizontal so when we do a horizontal analysis uh, of a company uh we need multiple years of data. If I don't have 2016 data, if I, again, if I just sort of scratch that out, if we pretend we didn't have this, right? Uh, I can't do horizontal analysis because there's nothing going on horizontally, right? There's nothing to compare to. If 2016 wasn't here, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't do horizontal analysis. So what a horizontal analysis is for a company is comparing year over year, how it's doing. You're comparing one year to the previous year and you're saying how did we do from one year to the next so it's actually a very uh, straightforward analysis there's a few ways to do horizontal analysis you can compute trend percentage but i i'm looking for just change from one year to the next so uh, what we're going to do here it says prepare a horizontal analysis for the company calculating a change and percentage change uh of each line item from one year to the next. Okay, so we'll make a new column here called change and one more column called percentage change. Uh, and this, uh, I gotta tell you, this is a lot of what an accountant does when they're evaluating how a company is doing. They'll just say, oh, well, let's compare last year to this year and see if we've improved or not, right? And, and uh, uh, you know, I was always taught when I was doing uh, my accounting exams, uh, if you want to know what's going on at a company, look for big changes uh, on big numbers, uh, you know, and just sort of say, okay, you know, you can certainly find things hidden in the little changes, but uh, big changes and big numbers gives you the big picture of what's happening at this company. So let's get started. Let's look at the change in sales from one year to the next. The change in sales was uh, 17,000 and it's positive, right? It, it grew by 17,000. It was negative. We'd put this in brackets. We would say, oh, it's negative. Uh, cost of goods sold also grew. It grew by 12,000. I'm just looking at the difference from one year to the next, 151 to 168. That's 17,000, right? The difference there. 78 to 90, the difference is 12,000. Uh, 73 to 78, our gross profits grew by 5,000. 30 to 32, our operating expenses grew by 2,000. 43 to 46, our operating income grew by 3,000. I could have also gone 5 minus 2 is 3. Uh, 3 to 2, our interest expense shrunk by 2,000. By Sorry, not by 2, but by 1,000. 40 to 44, our income before tax grew by four, income taxes grew by one, and our net income grew by 3,000. So there we have our changes. Um, let's do, and, and actually, frankly, I'm having a hard time really wrapping my head around what this means. Like, okay, we, our sales grew by 17 grand, our profits grew by three, I guess that's okay. You know, it's hard to hard to really uh, sink your teeth into this one. Let's look at percentage change and see if it's a little bit more revelatory, see if it reveals anything else. So to compute a percentage change, we've just done the change, right? Year uh, two, 2017 minus 2016. Uh, so it's year two minus year one, right? The, the later year minus the earlier year. Uh, so that's to get the change. Now to get percentage change, you just divide it by the earlier year. 
So in this case, it's divided by year one. So we're going to take that change, 17 grand, and divide it by the number in the earlier year. So that's, that's all you need to do to compute a percentage change. And that's what we're going to do here. So for sales, uh, it's going to be 17,000 divided by the earlier year. And the earlier year here was uh, 151. So our sales grew by 11.3%. Our cost of goods sold grew from 78 to 90. It grew by 12,000. We divide by the earlier year, 78,000. Our cost of goods sold grew by 15.4%. Okay, so now actually we've got something interesting to go on. This is already interesting to me. Uh, and this isn't good news. If I were running this company, I would not be thrilled to be reading this. Uh, my sales grew by about 11%. We expect cost of goods sold to move with sales because, of, of course, when we sell stuff, uh, it all has an associated cost of goods sold. Now, it could be a, a change in strategy, but if we sort of assume everything is kind of equal, we just sold a few more items, right? We sold 11% more of the same stuff we were selling last year. We would expect our cost of goods sold to increase by 11%. Our cost of goods sold increased by 15%. Now, I wouldn't have seen that if I hadn't computed the percentage change. I wouldn't have known, okay, this is a little bit troubling. We expect cost of goods sold to move with sales. Our cost of goods sold is outpacing our sales. This is bad news for us. We would expect them to be similar. And in fact, in an ideal world, we would expect to see cost of goods sold to decrease. Now, it could mean we decreased our price. Uh, it could mean the cost of the stuff we're buying went up and we didn't increase our price. Uh, but something happened here and this is a negative outcome for our company. So again, it's something I could have only done if I had done this horizontal analysis. It wouldn't have worked uh, just analyzing the change. I needed that percentage change. Okay, let's uh, uh, look at the next line. So again, the change is five grand uh, divided by 73 grand. So five grand was the change divided by the earlier year, 73, uh, and it's 7%, 6.8%. So again, my sales grew by 11%, but my gross profit only grew by like 7%. That's not good. That's a, a function of the fact that my cost of goods sold was higher as a percentage. My operating expenses, how much did they grow by? Two divided by 30,000 they grew by 6.7 percent again sales we think of as a driver of a lot of our costs so sales definitely drives cost of goods sold so the fact that sales went up by 11 cost of goods sold went up by 15 that's bad news the fact that sales went up by 11 and operating expenses went up by six is actually good news we were 11 percent busier but we only had six percent higher expense or seven percent higher expenses that's actually kind of good news so it's a mixed blessing this is a mixed bag if i were analyzing this company though and maybe we'll talk about it in a few moments i haven't answered number two. Oh, look at that b i can already tell you which item i'm investigating i'm investigating the cogs right our sales went up by 11 our cogs went up by 15 it's a big expense it's a big number and i would want to know why COGS increased by a higher percentage than did our sales. So I'm, I'm answering B uh, kind of in line here, but uh, that would be my answer for this for sure. All the rest are pretty small numbers and nothing jumping out at me. But anyway, let's continue. Operating income grew from 43 to 46. Uh, so uh, 3,000 was the change and we divide by our earlier year. It grew by 6.98%, uh, 6.98% rounds to uh, 7%. Uh, interest expense shrunk by $1,000. It shrunk by 33.3%. You might say, well, wait a minute. This is the biggest number. It's the only one that's negative. This is the one I should look at because it's the 33 is bigger than 15. And uh, it's, it's the only one that's negative. Well, we're dealing in a small number here. Three and two is relatively small in the big scheme of this income statement, like 3,000 to 2,000. And interest expense, We, if you just think about what it is, it's like we're paying down debt. Well, if I had less debt in 2017 than I had in 2016, uh, 
of course I'm going to have lower interest expense. So it's not really an alarm bells type of thing. Uh, if interest expense was exploding and really growing, then I'd be like, oh, I'm worried about it. But if it's shrinking and if, if I look on the balance sheet, my debt's shrinking or I was able to refinance and get a lower interest rate, I wouldn't be alarmed by this. I wouldn't be surprised by it. This isn't anything uh, jumping out at me particularly. Income before taxes, change of four grand and the base there is 40. So it's... 10 percent and uh, four divided by 40 is 10 percent uh income taxes is again 10 percent one divided by 10 and three divided by 30 our net income is 10 percent so you know oddly enough you might think this wouldn't be the one but the one that's jumping out at me to investigate here would be cost of goods sold we expect sales cost of goods sold gross profit and operating expenses all to kind of move together uh, and so sales increasing by 11 and cost of goods sold increasing by 15 is not hugely different, but it would be the one I'd investigate if I were running this company. Okay, that's it for our first horizontal analysis. Stay tuned for the next one.